This video is aimed to support general English course activity. Some sources are taken from British Council website and Yahoo Singapore. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first lecture of our new course in positive psychology. While some people may associate psychology with looking at what's wrong with us and at what problems we have, there is much more to psychology than that. Positive psychology, for example, looks at how to help people become happier. This lecture begins with a question. What makes a happy life? Now, I'm going to give you one possible answer. A happy life is a life in which you are completely absorbed in what you do. Now, how does this compare with what you and your partner said? This answer comes from the work of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi and the theory of flow. Csikszentmihalyi is a psychologist who has spent much of his professional life on the study of what makes people happy and how we can find happiness. Csikszentmihalyi suggests the theory that happiness is not caused by external events or things that happen to us. Our perception of these things and how we see these events either makes us happy or sad. In other words, if we want happiness, we have to actively look for it. However, this does not mean that we should always look for happiness. Csikszentmihalyi believed that our happiest moments happen when we are in a state of flow. The theory of flow can be summarized like this. When we are totally involved in, or focused on, what we are doing, we are in a state of flow. Csikszentmihalyi got the inspiration for this theory when he noticed how artists worked in a studio. They completely lost track of time. They didn't notice they were hungry or tired, and they could work for hours, even days, without stopping. Anyone I've spoken to who has experienced this state of concentration has said it's difficult to explain. The best way to explain it is that it is like being in a river and the flow of the water carries you away. For the rest of this lecture, I will explore this theory of flow in more detail. First, we will look at Csikszentmihalyi's life and how it influenced his ideas. Then we will look at the conditions that go with a state of flow. What creates flow exactly? Finally, we will look at activities that can help us achieve flow in our everyday lives. Will this course make you happy for life? Well, maybe. Maybe. Right, let's get started. If you look at the next slide. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the first lecture of our new course in positive psychology. While some people may associate psychology with looking at what's wrong with us and at what problems we have, there is much more to psychology than that. Positive psychology, for example, looks at how to help people become happier. This lecture begins with a question. What makes a happy life? Now, I'm going to give you one possible answer. A happy life is a life in which you are completely absorbed in what you do. Now, how does this compare with what you and your partner said? This answer comes from the work of Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi and the theory of flow. Csikszentmihalyi is a psychologist who has spent much of his professional life on the study of what makes people happy and how we can find happiness. Csikszentmihalyi suggests the theory that happiness is not caused by external events or things that happen to us. Our perception of these things and how we see these events either makes us happy or sad. In other words, if we want happiness, we have to actively look for it. However, this does not mean that we should always look for happiness. 
Csikszentmihalyi believed that our happiest moments happen when we are in a state of flow. The theory of flow can be summarized like this. When we are totally involved in or focused on what we are doing, we are in a state of flow. Csikszentmihalyi got the inspiration for this theory when he noticed how artists worked in a studio. They completely lost track of time. They didn't notice they were hungry or tired and they could work for hours, even days, without stopping. Anyone I've spoken to who has experienced this state of concentration has said it's difficult to explain. The best way to explain it is that it is like being in a river and the flow of the water carries you away. For the rest of this lecture, I will explore this theory of flow in more detail. First, we will look at Csikszentmihalyi's life and how it influenced his ideas. Then we will look at the conditions that go with a state of flow. What creates flow exactly? Finally, we will look at activities that can help us achieve flow in our everyday lives. Will this course make you happy for life? Well, maybe. Maybe. Right, let's get started. If you look at the next slide... People don't talk about breast cancer. Charlene Newland was diagnosed with breast cancer shortly after having a baby, at age 34. At the time, Newland was shocked breast cancer was even a possibility due to her age and having no family history with the condition. Newland's journey began when she felt a lump in her breast. She visited her doctor who thought it could be fibroids or a cyst. As such, Newland was shocked when she found out it was cancer. I blanked. I didn't really process or hear my doctor telling me the news. After I remember having all these emotions and when I saw my kids I realized I couldn't tell anybody about it, Newland told Yahoo Canada. Looking to the future. Like Newland, Carson and BCC are advocates for breast cancer research and development. And in Carson's eyes, both the survey and progress tracker are groundbreaking. This information really could be life-saving. And it helps us know how to develop new screening techniques and where funding should go. Over time, research development and the work BCC contributes has helped give breast cancer patients a survival rate of over 80%. However, Carson says the work is far from over. We're making huge strides in breast cancer research, but there's more to be done and we need everyone's help. Lend a voice, become an advocate and we can make a real difference. People don't talk about breast cancer. Charlene Newland was diagnosed with breast cancer shortly after having a baby, at age 34. At the time, Newland was shocked breast cancer was even a possibility due to her age and having no family history with the condition. Newland's journey began when she felt a lump in her breast. She visited her doctor who thought it could be fibroids or a cyst. As such, Newland was shocked when she found out it was cancer. I blanked. I didn't really process or hear my doctor telling me the news. After I remember having all these emotions and when I saw my kids I realized I couldn't tell anybody about it, Newland told Yahoo Canada. Looking to the future. Like Newland, Carson and BCC are advocates for breast cancer research and development. And in Carson's eyes, both the survey and progress tracker are groundbreaking. This information really could be life-saving. And it helps us know how to develop new screening techniques and where funding should go. Over time, research development and the work BCC contributes has helped give breast cancer patients a survival rate of over 80%. However, Carson says the work is far from over. We're making huge strides in breast cancer research, 
but there's more to be done and we need everyone's help. Lend a voice, become an advocate and we can make a real difference.